What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Spy, Tesla, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to talk about some very important levels to watch for as time progresses, what's going on with futures, and what you should be watching for in terms of the news. Let me just mention that I am not a financial planner. Make sure you take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo and deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. Deposit thousand dollars, you're guaranteed fifteen in total, and the offer ends very soon in just about seven days from now. Anyways, for spy, I just wanted to mention that we have a bit of a downtrend that's being respected right here as we're approaching some key support. So I'll talk about what the key support is in just a couple of minutes. Just know that right now we're seeing Tesla leading the market down as it's once again seen shrinking profits. Their earnings were not necessarily, I would say, bad. It was more like it was mixed. There were some things that were really good, other things that weren't so great. So what wasn't so good was the fact that their EPS was a bit of a miss. Uh, there was some uncertainty about the election, you know, the Mexican Gigafactory and other factors like that. But then there were some good things, at least for the long term, when it comes to Optimus, as Musk was very, very optimistic about that. Not to mention uh, new developments for the RoboTaxi. The event date was announced and other factors like that. So that's something else that's worth noting. There was good and bad that came from Tesla's earnings. But obviously, the media is going to focus more on the bad, such as the fact that their profits are not the best. And that's something else that's worth noting. Looking at the S&P 500, the Nasdaq Composite and others out there, we're actually seeing the market continuing to dip a bit. And then, once again, Tesla is getting a lot of attention right now for missing on EPS. Google, on the other hand, did relatively well. Uh, however, I just want to note that when it comes to certain segments, such as uh, the segment generated at, uh, uh, $8.66 billion dollars and revenue that's going to be for the YouTube advertising that was a little bit below expectations as part of why the share price is down. But other things were actually quite good for EPS and also for the overall revenue, just barely meeting expectations. So I would say Google had a lot of good and some mixed things that came out. But, you know, Wall Street will find their reasons to cause the share prices to dip anyways. For the real estate sector right here, you guys can see that uh, according to the National Association of Realtors, uh, sales are actually uh, down about 5.4% in the year earlier. And we're also looking at inventory seeing a 23.4% increase compared to the last year. We're seeing a big shift right now in real estate, and we're starting to see high amounts of supply and low demand as of right now. For earnings, just know that for before the market opened, we had AT&T announce their earnings. Then after the market closes, we're going to have Ford and IBM announce their earnings as well. For AT&T, they did. They had some good news. Uh, they basically beat subscriber additions at 419,000. They ended up beating on uh, revenue projections, and they also increased their guidance, which is not bad whatsoever. So that's not bad whatsoever, in my personal opinion. So that's some good news. When it comes to the economic calendar, I just want to mention that we also have at 9:45 a.m. That's the big global composite PMI PMI. Uh, for the different sectors coming out. So we have the composite PMI, manufacturing PMI, and services PMI, which is going to be very, very important. So watch for some volatility 15 minutes after the market opens. And besides that, all the data is very, very minor. So that's pretty much it. So what do I see for SPY? What is my personal opinion of this? Obviously, we're bearish. We had this high here. We came down, made a lower high, and we're coming down. So this favors a break to the downside. But for confirmation, make sure you watch this level right here. Uh, we have resistance currently at 550. We have support currently at this 548.5 area. If that breaks on SPY, I'll be expecting to come all the way down towards the 546.8 area and potentially even lower levels like 545 and 544 become possible. This chart favors downside after Tesla's earnings. So just note that we are still looking bearish. We're holding support at 548.5 so far, but there is a risk of more downside. For others out there, when we look at ES, ES is barely holding. So this is why we're at critical support on SPY. We're barely holding 55, uh, 45 on ES. If this breaks, this is going to be dipping all the way down towards 5,500 flats, the lower levels. So we're at critical support on ES right now. For SPX, we're also rejecting right here. As you guys can see, we have resistance at 5565. If it rejects and continues to fall, we have this big gap to fill all the way down here. We actually have our 50 EMA around 55.21, and we have that gap to fill in the, the lower 5500s. There is a risk of this dipping lower, so watch for that as well. For NVIDIA, we're kind of rejecting as well right over here. We're actually turning bearish on the four-hour time frame. Uh, NVIDIA is kind of rejected, so I could see this gap to fill around 117 to 118. We have the gap fill all the way down here. And we also have the 200 EMA. So this could continue to fall even lower. So watch for that in my personal opinion. For Bitcoin, Bitcoin is actually approaching resistance at 66,500. 
If we were to break that, we could go a little bit higher towards 66,800. But if it rejects here, I'll be looking for 65,500 as support. Bitcoin's trying to push a bit. It might push a little bit higher. It's actually filling an imbalance. So we could be looking for 66,800. We'll see what kind of reaction we get from there. For others out there, we have Tesla. Tesla has dumped all the way down to 225. I mentioned to everyone that if Tesla did not do, you know, if we got a, a negative reaction from earnings, if things weren't as great, you know, two, the 220s would be coming. If we were bullish, we'd be looking for the 270s. As you guys can tell, the 220s have come. So we're looking at 225 as support. If that fails, I'll be looking for 220. If that breaks, we have a support all the way down to 212. So be careful on Tesla. Watch resistance, resistance at 230 and then 232. Overall, it's still looking very weak. So just be careful on Tesla. We'll see how well it ends up holding 225 throughout the day. For NQ, we're also dipping a little bit more. Um, we basically have had this resistance at 20,000 kind of rejecting. I'll be looking for 19,500 as a potential target if we end up losing support. So we'll see how well it holds up uh, around the 19,650 area. If that breaks, look for 19,500. For the QQQ, we're testing our four hour 200 EMA. This is critical support at 473.3. If we lose this, I'll be looking for a dip all the way down towards 470, then 468. That's where we have these imbalances. If we bounce off this, we could try to rebound for four, uh, 475, then 480. But like I said before, it's looking kind of bearish. It could actually see more downside. So just be careful with that. For Apple, we're also dipping a little bit, so I'll be looking for 222 as key supports. If that fails, 219 is coming. Look at resistance at 226 as well, but this is, in my opinion, favoring some downside. For the IWM, we might be testing 219.8, and then we'll see if we bounce off that or not. That's going to be our 20 EMA, so watch for that very carefully. For Coinbase, there's a bit of a rejection right over here. Uh, I could be looking for a test of 254. We'll see if we bounce off this or not. So that's going to be a critical support. So watch it very carefully. For, for Amazon, we're kind of dipping a little bit towards this imbalance. Um, I'm going to be looking for a test of 183.5. And if it fails to hold that, so we could be dipping all the way back down to 180. So it looks a little bit more bearish in terms of this structure. For Meta, we're kind of rejecting a bit. We're going to be testing 474. We'll see if it holds this support or not. If it holds this, we'll be looking for a rebound for 480. If it loses, we'll be dipping all the way down towards 467. So I do see a risk of downside. Might try to rebound a bit, then continue lower. But it is looking more bearish to me. Microsoft is also looking more bearish. There's a bit of a downtrend right here. Make sure you look at 439.6 as support. If that fails, we'll be dipping all the way down towards 435. So there's a risk of some downside, in my opinion. Google's also rejecting. This is part of why the market's dipping. We got a nice little push and a drop as liquidity grab. And this is going to likely continue lower. I'll be looking to see how well it holds for uh, 175 and also 173. So just be mindful of all of that. With that being said, guys, I want to thank you all so much for listening. Please have an absolutely incredible rest of the day. And just know that right now the market is looking more bearish. Uh, but we're going to be looking at some critical supports to see if the market holds them or not. So we're approaching critical supports on Meta, on SPY, the QQQ, and the others. So we'll just have to see how things go from there. With that being said, enjoy market open, guys. I'll see you guys in a couple of hours and peace out.